Okay, yeah, so um, this is awesome, we're back. Um, I tried to explain a little bit why I thought that NIM technology was a very good technology. And now I'm gonna give some examples of projects that are being built on it. So this one is one of my favorites, it's called PacNIM. Yeah, and uh, it's a video game. There's a lot of people talking about they're gonna build video games on the blockchain but this guy actually did it. He was one developer by himself, and he was building in his spare time on the uh, evenings and weekends, and he built this video game so that you can get a token to start playing, and you send the token to start playing, and if you do very good, you can get extra tokens into your account, or maybe if you're the, the, um, the highest score player for the day, you can get a vanity token into your account, right? And then maybe if you want, some of these, like the vanity token can be non-transferable, but the other tokens that allow you to start the game can be transferable, and you could trade these with your friends. Um, we have a few other games that are being built on the NIM platform, and even uh, a gaming platform that's gonna be coming later on called Zarcade. So, very exciting area to integrate gaming into the blockchain. And again, the NIM APIs make that easy, make that possible. Uh, here's another project. This guy built a store on WordPress. And so anybody with a WordPress store now can use WooCommerce to uh, accept the ZIM. And this is kind of nice because Maybe for whatever reason, you can't integrate MasterCard or Visa into your website, but now through WordPress, anybody can make a WordPress website. Anybody can integrate Zim as a payment method, method into their website. And this guy was using a traditional kind of WordPress layout and database uh, to build it and keep track of all the orders and information. But we have another guy here, and this is even a step up. This is amazing. This guy uses only, only the NIM blockchain as his database. So all the customer information, everything that they do, gets stored as an encrypted message on the blockchain. And he's an artist, he's a musician, and a developer. And he made a website where you can buy his MP3s and download them. And of course, Payne and Zim. So kind of a nice idea to uh, build your own music store. Here's another one that we started to talk about a little bit before, Apostle. This is that um, project for uh, certificates that are updatable and transferable. And here's one project that's building on them. This is called LuxTag. A full disclosure, I also work at LuxTag. Um, <laughs> and LuxTag makes certificates for luxury items. And um, these are, again, updatable and transferable. You can add memos. Um, and it's very kind of interesting what we can do with real smart blockchain certificates. Here's another one called NIM ID. Some of you have maybe heard of Bit ID, uh, but this is basically a way that you can use the protocol of the NIM network to sign on to websites or to unlock or lock information on the internet. And it's kind of a standalone um, application and works with your NIM wallet. But building on that, the same developer who made NIM IoT made, um, the same developer who made uh, NIM ID also made, built on it and made IONIM. And this is very interesting because it takes the certificate from Apostle that I just mentioned before, and each IoT device has a certificate. And only the owner of the certificate on the blockchain now is able to operate the IoT device. And this is, starts to be really cool because you know, I can turn, if I own the certificate for my light bulb, then only I can turn the light bulb on and off through the NIM blockchain technology and the protocol, right? And obviously, we, we don't need to use the NIM blockchain to turn lights on and off. But as a proof of concept of how to merge IoT and NIM, with these certificates and this technology that's transferable, it's a really kind of great example. Um, 
We have uh, another one called Landstead. And this is a project where um, citizen IDs were made, uh, ID tokens. They're d given to citizens. It's a proof of concept given to citizens. And then also property titles are made on the blockchain. And property titles can only be traded and transferred in between registered citizens. So this is kind of an example of how to put property on the blockchain. We have NIM Authenticator. This is a two-factor authorization app. And it's basically an app that you could download, put on your phone, and um, whenever you make a transaction from your desktop, the NIM Authenticator beeps, and then it asks you if you want to approve the transaction or not. It's a basic two-factor, but it starts to get really interesting. All, all these projects by themselves are interesting, but they start to get really interesting when you combine them, like the NIM IoT. It combined Apostle and NIM ID. And what we're doing now is, I don't have it listed and highlighted, but I have another developer who has already made a um, NIM Reddit tipping bot. And uh, there's been a big problem with uh, bots on the internet, on these forums for a long time because they're always getting hacked, right? Or the money always disappears every time. And this developer building on NIM has made a decentralized tipping bot where the operator of the tipping bot, which is him, cannot steal the money. He cannot because it's, it works via multi-sig, and it works via a two of three contract, and the operator has one out of the three, and the user has two out of the three. And we're gonna re-update the NIM authenticator to work with the Reddit tipping bot so that you just send money to someone, say, hey, um, tip Jeff um, uh, 10 Zim, and you write that on Reddit, and then, your phone will beep and you can authenticate it. The phone will beep and say, do you want to tip Jeff Tenzim? And you just click yes. And um, I hope to have that out sometime this year. A fully decentralized, trustless tipping bot for the internet. Nobody's ever done that before. Um, NIM KRS, there's a huge problem um, with people losing their private keys. There's a huge problem with people losing their money. This is an example where you can fill out some basic information. Um, what is your favorite, or what is your pet's name? What is your favorite food? How old are you? Something, something, something. Answer a lot of questions and you can get a web hook. And then with that web hook, you can then re-answer those questions to rebuild your private key. So. Um, this is kind of a nice way, another security measure. NIM's all about security, right? We love security. Uh, micro wallet, this is a wallet that's been built into a Chrome extension. Again, because of the three tiers of the NIM network, you can even build in a wallet into Chrome to work through that, and it's completely safe and completely secure. NIMPay. This is a special mobile app that's designed just for assets. And like I mentioned before, anybody can make their own asset. And now there's an open source app that you can use that works for Android and iOS. Not or During break, I actually created a new cryptocurrency as a demonstration. And here's an app that you can fork, edit, update, and within a few days, even have your own app for your own cryptocurrency. Zim sign. This is a terrible logo, but uh, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, um, the logo is not worthy of what the actual program is. This is a fascinating program. This is a distributed signing contract. And the way it works is, for instance, you can have a distributed faucet. And um, somebody comes to your website, one server initiates a transaction, another server in France 
approves that transaction. And it looks, it's a smart signing contract. So it's gonna look and see, how much money have I sent out today? How much money has this account got? Is it on a whitelist? Is it on a blacklist? Does it have a secret code? And all this information is pushed through the blockchain. And nobody knows where these extra servers are on the block, in the whole world network because there's hundreds or thousands of servers and it basically becomes impossible to attack. Voting Center, I talked a little bit about that before. Corona Bank, this is an, a bank that released time tokens, labor hours on the NIM blockchain. And these are backed by your actual work. In a way, this is kind of how work was a long time ago. A long, 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 long time ago before money, you know, I would be a farmer, somebody else would be a, a shoemaker, and I would trade my, my crop, which was basically my working time to make my food for their shoe time directly. And this kind of goes back to that idea and is going to um, re-envision that on the blockchain. It's on NIM and Ethereum. And actually, I'm seeing a lot of projects these days that are choosing NIM and Ethereum because both blockchains have something extra to offer. Uh, there's some things that NIM can do that Ethereum can't do, and there's some things that Ethereum can do that NIM cannot do. So a lot of people are looking at them and they're kind of making it the two choice platforms. This is another one called DimCoin. Uh, they did an ICO. They're making DIM USD, DIM Euro. They're working on making commodities and they even have their own built-in trading exchange and trading engine built on top of the NIM protocol. Um, and one more Kamsa. This is coming from Japan. And this is kind of like a one-stop, one shop, one-stop shop for ICOs. And they're working again with Bitcoin and Ethereum and NIM. And it's going to use the NIM catapult uh, technology at its core for its trading exchange. And earlier today, I showed you one really cool thing that catapult does, but it actually does a lot more than that. And this uh, trading exchange is going to be able to offer a lot of unique services that we just can't find anywhere else. And that's gonna be good for customers because it makes things very safe for them, but also people building on this are gonna get a lot of advanced features. So very exciting about that. Um, that's about it for my examples. I have a, some more, but I they start to kind of get